Welcome, friends and foes, survivors and killers. Let's sit around the campfire together and talk about Dead by Daylight, specifically the role of the protagonist in an ensemble cast, identifying who the main protagonist of Dead by Daylight might be. While we all have our favourite survivors and who we all enjoy and identify with, varies from person to person, there are a series of traits and characteristics that naturally lend themselves to an effective main protagonist. Even the most diverse ensemble cast usually winds up focusing on between one and three main protagonists with the rest acting satellite characters who are secondary to the main plot. Over the course of this video, we're going to whittle down Dead by Daylight's cast of 23 playable survivors to the one who would best suit the role of main protagonist in Dead by Daylight's larger story. Hey look, I even made a cool chart so you can all see. But first, in order to know our protagonist, we must identify what exactly they are opposing, their antagonist. Despite Behaviour's attempts to market the Trapper as their face killer, and therefore a primary antagonist of the game, it's extremely clear to anyone paying attention to the story that the Trappy Boy doesn't really have the individual importance to suit being the primary antagonist. Those shoes are just too big for him to fill. That auspicious role goes to the Entity itself, and it's not even remotely close. The Entity is directly responsible for every single act of cruelty, violence, and malice that takes place in its realm. It forms the chief obstacle to the survivors by putting them into its trials and subjecting them to the brutality of its killers, a great many of whom were brutalised by the Entity in their own right. If Sawan put us up to the Entity, Dead by Daylight's main conflict would be resolved. The story would be told and everyone could go home, apart from some killers who would still be evil and murderous. But their ability to continue to be evil and murderous would mostly be stopped if the Entity wasn't giving them an endless supply of victims. There is pretty much no room for reinterpretation here, the Entity is Dead by Daylight's ultimate antagonist, so whoever our main protagonist is going to be has a pretty big challenge ahead of them. Fortunately, we've got a pretty great cast of potential protagonists ready to face it down, but first we've got to thin the herd a bit. For a survivor to really be considered a viable nemesis for the Entity, they can't afford to have their focus split between the Entity and a single individual killer. Take Jeff Johansson for example. While he's undoubtedly a good man who anyone would like to have by their side in the trials, Jeff's thematic counterpart has kind of already been spoken for. Jeff released alongside the Legion, and he has quite a lot more in common with the killer he released with than basically any other original survivor. Not only did Jeff grow up in the same town that Frank, Joey, Julie and Susie grew up in, his first commissioned piece of art was requested by Frank himself, and you can see his handiwork painted here on the Ormond Resort map. As a result, Jeff is the only original survivor confirmed to have met his associated killer outside of the trials. He also shares a lot of his core character themes with the Legion, namely acceptance, rebellion, and the influence of music on one's life. But going too far into these specifics, I think warrants its own video. I think at this point, the case to exclude Jeff from the protagonist standings has been made fairly clear, and the same logic can be applied to all the licensed survivors, who release alongside killers from the same franchise. In their original source material, and their design of the chapter, they are written to be the counterparts of their licensed killer, and would therefore be unsuitable to directly oppose the entity as well. That takes Jeff, Laurie, Steve, Nancy, Quentin, Cheryl, and Detective Tap out of the equation completely. Our total 23 survivors now stands at 16. Now we know who our protagonist can be, it's time to discuss who they should be, and more broadly, what traits a good main protagonist has. There are so many different traits you could give a protagonist that writing guides and teachers will list off to you, but I've loosely condensed them down to four core things that the audience must be shown to make your protagonist a strong one. We must know what they want, why they want it, what they are willing to do to get what they want, and why we should care about them and root for them to get what they want. So naturally, we're going to start by ruling out survivors whose motivations are unclear or just not very well written. The poster girl for an inactive and fairly uninteresting protagonist is, sadly, Jane Romero. Throughout her backstory and the archive story, All the World a Stage, we learn a lot about Jane's life and grow to care for her as a character, but most of the focus is on her career and her efforts to chase it. Not who she is as a person, or what she really wants beyond success, which she already has before entering the wrong entity in the first place. In short, Jane has no real goals that we can support her in achieving, even though we'd probably support her in those goals if she got one. She'd be a great protagonist if she had more direction, but as it stands, we have to discount Jane. While we're discussing characters without direction, now is also a good time to rule out the only people who actually seem fairly happy the way things are, Feng Min, Bill Overbeck, and Jake Park. If your main protagonist is meant to oppose the entity, it would be quite peculiar if that character was actually pretty content with the status quo. That's exactly the issue with these three. They're all dedicated survivalists who don't really have lives that they want to go back to. 
and all seem better suited and even happier fighting for their lives in the realm of the Entity than they do anywhere else. Say Jake was the protagonist, what would the story look like? Join our intrepid hero, Jake Park, in his quest to survive the brutal world of the Entity, so he can go back to, uh, surviving other brutal places. It just wouldn't make sense, so bye bye Jake, Bill, and Feng Min. And then, there were twelve. Of that twelve, there's several I cut away as potentially being too abrasive or socially challenged to be effective protagonists. Nia and Ace are both quite self-serving characters who seem content to just mooch along with life without really contributing anything meaningful to someone else's life, making them quite hard people to root for. After all, if you don't care about other people, why should other people care about you? Claudette and Felix have a similar issue. Despite being kind, selfless and driven people that we can easily root for, they're both very introspective and socially distant characters. These kinds of characters can be excellent protagonists in stories that play to their strengths of academic and emotional intelligence. Like Bilbo Baggins and Charlie Bucket are very good examples of these protagonists. You're not going to beat the Entity by sitting in the corner and thinking about it really hard. I like Claudette and Felix a lot, but Dead by Daylight isn't the kind of story where their characters could shine to their fullest. And now we're down to the top 8. The list is starting to get tight, and I'd say all of the 8 remaining characters have the potential to be really good main protagonists. Right now we're not asking, are they good enough? Because they are. But instead, are they better than the others? And by asking this question, I'm going to eliminate Meg, David and Zarina from the runnings now. Not because of anything inherently wrong with them per se, but instead because I think they'd be more compelling as secondary protagonists, or deuteragonists, than main protagonists. Think less Professor X or Iron Man, and more Nightcrawler or Hawkeye. Definitely a fan favourite, but one better suited to a supporting role in the main conflict. Meg, David and Zarina all fit this category like a glove. Meg's a strange character, because she's a big melting pot of traits we'd associate with a main character, mixed together with several that we'd rather avoid. She's competitive, reckless, and seems to value running away from her problems more than facing them or standing up for others, but she's also shown as quite thoughtful and caring, as she voluntarily slows her life down to care for her ailing mother. Her characterization has serious potential to be a realistic and interesting protagonist, but she's sadly quite inconsistent, and that's what makes me relegate her to supporting cast only. David is kind of an asshole. He nearly set him out on fire, but he's also very protective of people he cares about. Watching that story develop alongside a wider plot and seeing him learn to care for his fellow survivors would be a super rewarding arc for David, but his scrappy aggressiveness might make him seem too bristly to root for as a main protagonist. Think of him as the Han Solo of Dead by Daylight. Zarina is a similar, but much less extreme example. Her greatest asset is her laser focus on what she thinks is right and wrong, but such resolve may also be her greatest hindrance as a main protagonist. It can be quite hard to support a main character with a cast iron belief in right and wrong if their perspective becomes meaningfully challenged, since they can either come across as condescending and heartless, or ignorant and misinformed. However, her potential to play off someone a bit more tender and learn to be malleable could be an excellent direction for her character. Essentially, she's more Mr. Spock and less Captain Kirk. This leaves us with five remaining potential main protagonists. Dwight, Kate, Adam, Ash, and Yui. Now we're down to this lucky few, it's time to get rid of the Mavericks. Ash and Yui could both be top-notch protagonists, with Ash already having proved his worth as one of the most successful horror protagonists of all time in the award-winning Evil Dead franchise. They're accomplished leaders, they're resourceful, they're charismatic, and they're clearly ready to take the fight to the Entity. Which is exactly why they'd probably lose. If Dead by Daylight was a comedy or an action movie, Ash and Yui would be perfect protagonists, but it isn't. It's a cosmic horror story. They're not sumo wrestling with Leatherface, or fist bumping off their blow off the hag's head with a 12 gauge shotgun. They're struggling against a force greater than any one person, and for that, you need to be measured, deliberate, and ready to take leadership seriously. Speaking of leadership, let's talk about Dwight. We all know how much behaviour loves Dwight. He's the survivor you play at the tutorial, he's in all the trailers, he's the poster boy for the survivor side, and all his perks and descriptions focus around his leadership. He even has a perk called leader for god's sake, of course he's the protagonist! Except no, no he's really not, and let me tell you why. Over the years, Dwight's role as the survivor everyone starts off with has kind of eaten away his other traits, to the point that the community doesn't know Dwight because he's a leader, 
but because he's dumb and the comic relief. Look at this man, he's got pantaloons on! Main protagonists of horror games don't wear pantaloons, I'm sorry. Don't get me wrong, I like Dwight, I really do. But Dwight's a meme now. If Dead by Daylight's taking itself seriously, Dwight's hapless everyman loser character is completely unsuitable for the leader role. Unless, of course, peak leadership involves hiding in lockers and blowing up generators. And if Dead by Daylight isn't taking itself seriously and is more action-oriented in its future story direction, then Ash and Yui are better protagonists anyway, because they're actual badasses who still have better leadership qualities than Dwight does. I mean, we're told Dwight's an aspiring leader, but he doesn't actually do anything in his stories that display that leadership. It's an informed attribute. And behaviour just telling us, don't worry, this guy's our protagonist, honest dude, just trust us, doesn't cut it. I'm not saying Dwight's an unsalvageable character. If behaviour turned him round a bit, they could definitely put him back on track as the main protagonist. Show us why the other characters follow his leadership. But as it stands, he's always going to be baby Dwight hiding in a locker. And now we're down to the final two. Kate Denson and Adam Francis. And this here was actually very close, because I think they both have their own distinct claims to the throne, so to speak, that need to be separately reviewed. Adam Francis is the entity's practical rival. He was a teacher who emigrated to Japan from his birthplace in Jamaica and was beloved by his students. I can't think of anyone better suited to managing and leading a diverse group of people in unfamiliar situations. He's selfless too, he gave his life for a stranger on the train crash that sent him into the fog. That's one hell of a credential for a main protagonist. He's methodical, academically and emotionally intelligent, willing to take risks and still capable of making bonds with people. He's ideal leader material for a group of survivors looking to escape the Entity's clutches for good. However, Kate Denson is the Entity's symbolic rival. And let's go into the meaning of that. Benedict Baker's journal entry about Kate highlights why she's antithetical to everything the Entity represents. The Entity feeds on emotion to survive, whether that's the horror and agony of those who fall prey to the killers, or the momentary hope that survivors have of escaping, only to be thrust back into the trials. Kate is a symbol of that hope but not in a way the Entity can actually use. Kate's singing and friendliness doesn't influence how the survivors feel about the trials in the same way the Hope of Escape does, but instead makes them look past the trials altogether. She induces an aspiration for something greater than just surviving the next thing the Entity throws at them, and that's something the Entity presumably isn't capable of feeding off, because if it was, there'd be no need for the trials. So maybe Kate, by virtue of her community spirit, standing up against the Entity's parasitic nature, is the main protagonist after all. Nice try. It's Adam, and here's why. Adam is also the Entity's symbolic rival, sort of. Let's think about what the realm of the Entity actually is for a second. It's a world of permanent punishment and pain inhabited by horrors beyond human understanding. The realm of the Entity is hell, and the Entity is big spidery Satan. And according to Judeo-Christian mythology, who is the greatest enemy of Satan? and the one who will save us all from his evil clutches and eternity of punishment in hell, the Messiah. I don't know if you've noticed this, but Adam Francis has so many biblical and messianic ideas associated with him that I'm surprised he doesn't have his cool high top fade hidden under a bishop's hat. His name's a good start. Adam was the first man who ate the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, and Francis was a name popularised by the Italian priest St Francis of Assisi in the 13th century. All his parts contain biblical references too. For example, didactic teaching is a method of education pioneered by the Catholic Church to teach scripture to the uneducated masses, and David famously beat Goliath using Adam's favourite weapon, the humble pebble. But Adam's perks are at their most biblical when you look at deliverance. Not only is the perk image reminiscent of Jesus walking among his disciples, a common image in Renaissance art about Jesus, but the name of the perk is a reference to the Lord's Prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But it goes even deeper than that. In one version of the Bible, which switches between the original Greek and Hebrew called the Berean Study Bible, the Lord's Prayer pans out like this. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Or in Dead by Daylight terms, if you forgive men of their mistakes and take them off the hook, you will be rewarded by your own mistakes being forgiven. Which is a pretty accurate description of what deliverance does in the game. This evidence is pretty conclusive. If my interpretation of the Entity as a Satan allegory is valid, then Adam Francis, by being our messiah, is the story's protagonist. Kate's not the messiah, she's a very naughty girl. I beg you all, please do not Google that. 
friends and foes, survivors and killers, we have ourselves a conclusion. After a whistle stop tour of every survivor in the game, the protagonist of Dead by Daylight is Adam Francis. He's got everything you could ever want in a protagonist of a cosmic horror story, from inspiring leadership skills to heavy messianic imagery, and if certain leaks are to be believed, he's going to feature heavily in the next tome, but don't quote me on that. Right, a quick bit of channel talk before we say goodbye. Given the channel is still very new, the reception has been absolutely amazing, so thank you everyone who's watching these videos. Um, next week is going to be a retrospective on the Saw franchise and looking at Amanda Young. So if you're interested in that, please do subscribe or pay attention to the next one. Okay, that's all from me. So stay safe, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one.